Pier no Azura has a wide selection of dining choices on board. And in this video, we're going to explore them and I'll give you my reviews on what the food was like. I'm going to start at the speciality restaurants and the first one of these is the Beach House. The setting here was informal and the food was flavours of Latin America and the Caribbean. And the cover charge at the Beach House is only £9.50. Although some items do have a small upcharge. For starters we went with the crab tostadas and the island spiced chicken wings. And we both went for the upcharge fillet steak. Let's listen to that sizzle. And the sides we had were baked potato and some chips. And you could carry on cooking your steak if you liked, just to make it perfect for you. How do you like your steak cooked? Let me know in the comments below. For dessert I went with the banana split, which came in this amazing sweet taco cup. And my other half had the golden Duthé de Leche tart. Overall I thought the beach house was a great option for speciality dining, especially if you're on a budget but you'd like to treat yourself while you're on your cruise. The next speciality dining restaurant we went to was the Indian inspired Sindhu. I can get a bit stuck in my ways when I go to an Indian restaurant at home, so now is an opportunity to try something different. This is an a la carte menu, so you just pay for the items that you choose. And as you can see, the prices are very reasonable. And I won't even attempt to pronounce these dishes properly. For starters, we had the spice crusted haddock. Mumbai Caesar salad and lime pickle mayonnaise. And we also went for the tandoori rattan, which is the basil king prawns, chicken tikka and smoked lamb skewer. And for mains we went with the beef tenderloin, curried mash and the spinach puree. And this is the Sindhu signature plate. which is the chicken curry, the lamb boona, and the coconut prawn masala. This is quite possibly one of the best meals I've ever had. And not just on a ship either. I'm talking about one of the best meals I've ever had, ever. If you're ever on a P&O ship that's got a Sindhu restaurant, I can't recommend this highly enough. And by the end of all of this, we were pretty stuffed. So we decided to share the trio of Indian ice cream. And the flavors were mango, chocolate, and malai. The third speciality dining restaurant we went to was the Epicurean. We chose to have afternoon tea. This is the menu, and the good news is you're having all of it. The presentation of this is absolutely stunning. The savoury items are at the top, the desserts are in the middle, and at the bottom are the scones. Or do you call them scones? Please let me know below. This is the corn fed paprika chicken ciabatta, the herb lobster roll, and the beetroot with vanilla smoked salmon short crust pastry. And this is the fancy, the tea cake and the mousse. And you use a pipette filled with dark rum to pour over the Varine Mont Blanc. Delicious. And lastly, it's back to them scones or scones as you jam on top or jam on the bottom. 
the final speciality dining on board is the Glass House, which is headed up by Ollie Smith. And while Ollie is a renowned wine expert, for me it was the beer that kept bringing me here night after night. The serving staff quickly got to know us. Two pints of Jolly Ollie, yes please. The Glass House is definitely somewhere I'll be trying next time I'm on P&O. Azura has three onboard main dining rooms, which are the Meridian, the Peninsula and the Oriental dining rooms. And the Meridian and Peninsula both offer freedom dining, which means that you can turn up at any time for dinner between 6pm and 9.30pm. And the Oriental features club dining. Here guests are seated at the same table and at the same time each evening. However, all three restaurants serve the exact same menu. On Freedom Dining, you can make a reservation at one of the restaurants using the My Holiday app, which can save time instead of queuing up for your dinner. And we'll start off with breakfast, which is served between 7am and 9.30am. And as you can see, they have a great selection of both hot and cold items. The food and service here were really good, and we ate here practically every day and it meant that we didn't have to go and face the buffet but more about that later on although i wouldn't leave it too late to get to the dining room as sometimes they run out of items and main dining room lunch is something the new cruisers seem to miss out on and that's usually because it only happens when you have sea days it was only served in the Peninsula restaurant and between noon and 1.30, so you better be quick. And although there is an express lunch option, for me, I just relax, take it easy, it's a sea day, I've got nowhere to go. And the choice at this time of day seems to be more light bites and sharing options, which is fine by me. Celebration night aboard P&O is one of the highlights of their cruises. Which means in the main dining room, there's an enhanced menu. There are some fantastic choices available, so definitely take advantage of this, and if you fancy a specialty dining option, do that on another evening. This is a four course meal. So for starters, I went with the wild mushrooms in puff pastry. It was absolutely delicious. followed by the minestrone soup and then the fillet of turbot. And the main dining room is a good way to try something different because if you don't like it, you can always get something else. In fact, if you'd like a couple of main courses, they'll be happy to bring them out for you. And my meal was finished off with some cheese and crackers. The Oriental restaurant it's a club dining choice on Piano Azura. Which as I've explained, means that you sit at the same table with the same guests at a set time each evening. There are two sittings, one at 6.30 and one at 8.30. However, even though we had freedom dining, we did manage to have a little bit of club dining on our cruise and the people we sat with were really friendly, which was quite nice. Although I suppose you could be sat with people you dislike for an evening meal, I'm not sure that was the way for me. And as this feels a bit like classic cruising, I decided to have a classic starter with this prawn cocktail. Which was followed by this very succulent roast lamb. Plenty of mint sauce, of course. and this was followed by my favourite, cheese and biscuits. And this is the menu for the second lunch in the main dining room. And this seating was far busier as more passengers were aware that it was on. For starters, I went with a pithifer of garlic cream mushrooms. 
which both smelled and tasted amazing. For my main course, I went with a fish and chips. As you can see, it was definitely a smaller portion of fish. But it was very tasty regardless. And for dessert, I went for the fruit salad. And this is the menu for our final night on board the ship. I was very tempted by the Mediterranean seafood and octopus salad. Although I was slightly unsure and I didn't fancy braving it. Went with the old favourite, tomato soup. And for my main course, I went for the turkey breast and parmahan salt and bocca. But I do have to say, the turkey was a little bit dry. And in a thankful change from cheese and biscuits, went for the warm spice fruits and orange strudel, with plenty of custard too. There are a couple of choices if you want to grab some food while chilling out by the pool. And the first of these is the poolside grill. Which serve the typical selection of burgers and hot dogs. And the food here was pretty standard stuff, nothing to write home about, but it definitely filled a spot. I found the poolside pizza to be a much better choice. Finally, we come to the buffet, which unfortunately was a bit of a letdown. I'm not saying that it's small, but it was definitely a blink and you'll miss it type of affair. This is the entrance to the buffet. On our sailing, only one of the two sides in the middle were open. And this is the exit to the buffet already. And this portion of the buffet at the rear of the ship wasn't open for the whole time we were on our cruise. Which meant at busy times like breakfast, it was an absolute zoo. My main issue with the buffet was just the lack of choice. Especially with the hot items. Felt far too often that your choice was take it or leave it. And unfortunately, far too often it was only served at room temperature and the small size of the buffet meant you were getting in each other's way all the time. And the highlight of hot choices tended to be the roast dinner. The cold choice selection actually wasn't too bad. It had a really good choice of salad, sandwiches and wraps. where the buffet came into its own was for a late night snack. And if you have a sweet tooth, there was a wide selection of desserts. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing.